because obviously happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah to everyone out there. But you got to be excited when we get past the solstice and days are getting longer. You can look out my window and see snow here in Colorado and uh, looking forward to um, longer days for sure. All right, my weekly update, December 22nd. I cannot believe we are starting 2021 in just a few short weeks or so. And I'll tell you what, I think this is an important update again today. We're going to talk about jobless uh, claims uh, last week, the housing market index, it's a really important index, the Fed meeting. I think this went relatively unnoticed last week, but I'll tell you what, the results of the Fed meeting are important, and we're also going to be talking about conforming loan limits. Now, if you're in the business, everyone knows conforming loan limits went up, but I will tell you, I talked to a lot of agents, a lot of lenders about this, a lot of buyers, sellers, and I think they are missing some of the important uh, components of why the increase in the conforming loan limits is relative, because it'll create volume for sure if we're smart and we market to it. All right, let's look at the jobless claims real quick. Another 885,000 filed for benefits. It's up 23,000 from the previous week. Continuing claims decreased, but guys, those are for the wrong reasons. They're decreasing because people are coming off benefits, not because necessarily employment is going up because it's not. We just saw that. Uh, this week, and I'll talk about it next week, I'm sure, the stimulus package uh, was signed yesterday. Look, um, I think that's great. People need relief. There's no question about it. I'm, I'm certainly in favor of that. Concerned there was a ton of pork in, in the um, in the package, and that's just money we you know need that needs to be going back into our economy, not not elsewhere. Um, and then we have the vaccines coming out, uh, so we'll see what happens there. But I'm telling you, jobs are the bedrock of a housing market. We have got to get the economies open up in all 50 states so that we can continue to grow. All right. Now, I saw in the media kind of this week, last week, uh, you know, the, the housing market index fell four points. All the categories within the housing market fell. Uh, but, guys, here's what you got to understand. This number now is still the second highest number on record. So housing is unbelievably resilient in this time. But my fear uh, with the housing is going on and housing is what the federal monetary policy is. Because, look, housing is resilient. But the Fed is still pumping a ton of money into mortgage-backed securities, which provides stability in the market. And stability is a good thing. Don't, don't hear me the wrong way. But at some point, we have to understand that it, it, we're going to pay for all the money that's, that's just coming into the marketplace and artificially keeping our interest rates low. And I'm very concerned that when that inflation hits, and it will hit, how are we going to respond to it? how we're going to be resilient, and how we're going to keep volumes up so we can sustain uh, the industry. So Fed comes out and says they're going to keep rates near zero till 2023. Uh, out of heck, they're smarter than I am. I'm not a big fan of telling everybody what you're going to do because I, I think it creates an artificial market. And look, I'm working with agents and, and lenders, buyers, sellers right now too, and it is completely lopsided. People don't understand that really artificially low interest rates favor sellers. They don't favor the buyers. The reason is simple. Think about the deals you're in. Uh, contingent offers, a lot more pressure on uh, contingent offers. You know, 20, 30, 40 offers per house. So this the, the price is going up on these homes. And that's great for the seller, but it's not great for the buyer. I like a neutral market, and we're certainly not in a neutral market right now. Fed is projecting 5% unemployment in 2021. Okay. Um, good. I guess they're a lot smarter than I am. 5%. I don't I quite know how that's going to happen. But And GDP is at 4.2%. 4 Those are good numbers, and it's important. All right, I'm going to leave you with this. The national conforming loan limit, this is old news. I'm sure it, had, it came out like a month ago. Is up to 548,250, and the ceiling loan limit is 822,375. Now, that obviously varies by county across the, the country. But here's what I want to make sure everybody understands don't miss this opportunity. Rates are at historic lows. What does that mean? Buyers are, or, excuse me, uh, sellers, owners are getting tremendous equity in their homes right now because interest rates are so low. The way we're going to handle the economic pressures of inflation, COVID vaccines in 2021, 2022, 2023 is going to be understanding how we worked with this leverage, this equity leverage in the homes is what I call for investment properties and second homes. And if you're an agent, a buyer, seller, and you're not thinking about those strategies, how to use uh, products in the marketplace, not only going to miss opportunity, but I think you're going to uh, uh, miss some some wealth building, but certainly the stability we need in the industry. So I really hope that uh, that everybody would uh, feel free to contact me on any of those. 
topics of uh, how we handle conforming loan limits, how that creates opportunity to leverage equity in the homes. Call, text, or email me anytime. Thanks again for checking in. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. And let's make the most